In this video, we'll look at balancing chemical equations. So the reason that we need to balance a chemical equation is all to do with the conservation of atoms. And that states that atoms are not created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. And this means that the number of atoms in the products and the reactants must be the same. So let's look at an example. Here we have a chemical equation. This is methane, this is oxygen, this is carbon dioxide and this is water. So what we're doing here, we're burning methane in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And this is known as a combustion reaction. So according to the conservation of atoms, the number of atoms in the reactants on the left side must equal the number of atoms in the products on the right side. And as you can see on the left side, we have four hydrogen atoms, we have four oxygen atoms and one carbon atom. On the right side, we have one carbon atom, four oxygen atoms and four hydrogen atoms. So therefore, we have the same number of atoms in the reactants and the products. So this is why we have to balance our chemical equations. Now, how do we do that? Well, to balance a chemical equation, we can only change the numbers in front of the reactants or products. These are called coefficients. In this example here, you can see that I've added this two here. This is the coefficient in front of the oxygen. And I've added this two here. This is the coefficient in front of the water. So by adding these coefficients in front of the oxygen and in front of the water, I've balanced this equation. So the number of atoms in the reactants equals the number of reactants in the products. So let's look at some examples. Here we have sodium Na reacting with chlorine gas, which is Cl2, to make sodium chloride, which is NaCl. Now, if we count up the number of atoms, we can see we have one atom of sodium and we have two atoms of chlorine because chlorine is a diatomic gas. That means it forms molecules with two chlorine atoms. On the right side in the products, we have one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. So we can see that this equation is not balanced. So you can see I've balanced this equation by adding a two in front of the sodium, the Na, and a two in front of the NaCl, the sodium chloride. So now we have equal numbers of atoms in the reactants and the products. Let's look at the next example. Here we have calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid to form calcium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide gas. If we count up the number of atoms in the reactants and the products, we can see that everything is balanced apart from the hydrogens and the chlorines. And as you can see, I've balanced this equation by adding a two in front of the HCl. So we now have the same number of atoms in the reactants and the products. Next, we look at state symbols. State symbols show the physical state, solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous, of the reactants and products in a chemical equation. So the state symbols are S, which is for solid, L, liquid, G, gas, and AQ, which is aqueous, which means in solution. They are written in subscript and in brackets. So here's an example. We have sodium, which is a solid. You'll notice it's written in subscript and in brackets. Water, which is a liquid, so we have L, the sodium hydroxide is in solution, so we use AQ, and the hydrogen is a gas, so we use G.